let's start to look how we can create a radial gauge chart with a value here in the center. So let's continue on and start to put text in the center. By the way, I have here this. This is from the previous video. Make sure you watch this video here, create a circular gauge chart in chart US4, because this is a continuation. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here. I'm going to work on this specific part. What we have here is basically the super draw, which draws everything. But now what I want to do is control more specifically some text put in here. So how can we do this? Well, we can say here constant. And what we're going to do here is an object destructuring. But this object destructuring will be based on this dot chart. So now we have this. And then what I want to do here is basically say CTX data and chart area. So if you're not familiar with object destructuring or chart area, I'm going to recommend you to watch the video in the description box about understanding the chart area and understanding object destructuring. Here, what I want to do is I want to get the top, the bottom, left, right, we might need the width and the height. We won't be using them all, but just having them all just for uh, preparation. So now, if you're wondering what is this Basically, it is just the chart object. I'm going to grab this chart, which is the chart here, refresh and open up here. And you can see here we get all of the information of the chart object with everything around it, our chart area and everything that you can imagine. So what we want to do now is to draw something. So I'm going to use here ctx.save. And then what I want to do here is to uh, put in the text. We're going to say ctx dot font to indicate what kind of value do we want to have here or what do we want to have here. We're going to say here, let's say we want the text should be bold, 50 pixels and a font family of sans serif. Once we have this, we can now start to put in the text. So I'm going to say ctx.fill text and then here should be the text that we want. Here should be the x coordinates and here the y coordinate. So how do we get these coordinates here and this text here? Well, let's do first here 10 and 10. If I save this, refresh, you can see here it works. And of course, because our font is so huge, it clips off at the very top because it will push it to the exact center of 10 by 10 in pixels. What we want to do is we want to go move it down here. So how do we do this? Well, we have here the chart area and the chart area gives us a lot of control. So what I want to do is I want to be basically here on this bottom line. Now what I do is I say here bottom and I'm going to say here for the Y value, we're going to put in bottom. If I do this, you can see here now it moves nicely down. Now what I want to do is to be exactly in the center. So how can I do that? Well, what we have here is the width. The width would indicate from this point all the way to there. And what I want to do is I want to have the center here. So how do we get this? Well, the width of the chart area divide by two. Let's save that. Refresh. There you are. So now you can see here, you might say, what's well, not to be in the center? That is correct. The reason why is because we're working with text align left, meaning it will ignore the left side and start at this point or the very left or this side here and then goes to the right. So what I need to do here is control this. So I'm going to say ctx dot text align. And then we say here equal, we can say your center to put it in the very center. Save this, refresh, there we are. Next, what I want to do here is maybe want to change the font color. To change the color, I'm going to say ctx dot fill style. This will indicate the color and this could be any color we want. Let's make this blue. And if you save this, make sure every semi column here, refresh, now it becomes blue. So what I want to do is I want to grab the color here, which is this red border color. To do this, I have here this specific part, which eventually leads us to the data here. So we can go to the data sets and then get, for example, the border color and an index number zero. So let's do that. I'm going to say here, I'm going to put in here data dot data sets index zero and then dot border color index because it's an array as well zero save that refresh and now you can see here it grabs the color here 
if I do index 1, it will grab the blue color or the border color of the blue element or arc. So now we have all of this. What I would like to do here is change this into something useful. So what I want to do is I want to put in a score. So I'm going to scroll down here and in this data set I'm going to add up a new item. And this item will give it the namespace of score. And this score will be for example 12. I'm just making it up as I go. But what I want to do is I want to grab this score. So what we're going to do here, we're going to say here instead of this, all we have to do here, same, we're going to copy this and put it in here. And then instead of border color, because we're still in the same data set, we're going to say here score. If I save this, refresh, you can see here this works. So now what I want to show you something else. So what would happen if I would have two of these items here? Well, all I have to do here is let's copy this, put that in here, say index number or, or ID number two for the second canvas, scroll down and just copy this chunk of code here, which is just the data and our configuration and the rendering of our chart. Put that in there, say here number two, this number two, config will be number two because this will be number two and the data here, colon data two, the type circular gauge chart. If you don't understand how I get this, please watch the other video I recommend in the very beginning. And uh, we have here the data, and then we have to make sure that this data is number two, but I'm going to remove here the score. We have no score in this chart. If I save this, refresh, you can see it will work, but it gets an undefined. This is all nice, but this is a bit, a bit problematic. So how do we make sure that if there is no score uh, namespace with a value assigned to it, please don't show anything. So what we're going to do is run up here, in our item, and what we could do is the following. I'm going to say here this here. I'm going to say here a constant, and this constant will be the name of score equals score or else blank. Now, if I save this, uh, oh, all right, interesting. The reason why it doesn't work, of course, I need to have this score variable or constant being shown in here. Save this, refresh, and now. We don't show it here. We could even do it as an if statement, don't show it at all. But this is fine as well. And that's basically here. Now we create instantly two different type of charts with the difference with the uh, labels being shown and one without shown.